According to this article, there's only seven public places to play grass tennis in the United States. I fell in love with this game 10 months ago and have yet to play on the hallowed surface. But I'm looking to make that change today. All right, Kyle, what are we doing today? Today we're playing grass tennis. Do you have any idea where we're gonna get that done? Nope, no idea. There's not a grass tennis court in Texas. We're gonna go figure it out. We're about to head to the coffee shop, do some research, and this weekend we will be playing grass tennis. Mark my word. Let's go. We got some much needed caffeine in our system and got to work. Our first choice was obvious, the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club. Founded in 1868, this place is most notable for hosting the Wimbledon Championships. Legends like McEnroe, Sampras, Federer, Djokovic, and now Alcaraz have made this place special. But let's see if they have time for a beginner like me. Hey, this is Trey from Winners Only. Oh, y'all don't know who I am? They didn't answer. <laughs> All right, Kyle, look up West Side Tunes Club. That looks like a pretty good option. Founded in 1892, this place had some of the most beautiful grass courts I had ever seen, and its location in New York was much more feasible to us. It even had a storied history of its own, hosting 60 previous US Opens. We tried everything from phone call to email, and I even got them to reply to an Instagram DM, but it just wasn't gonna happen this weekend. All right, how about Fisher Island Tennis Club in Miami? We are trying to play on a grass tennis court. We would like feature your court. No, I'm not a member. I'm, I'm not staying at the hotel. $1,400 a night. We tried every other place with no luck and dejection started to set in until I stumbled across something pretty special. All right, Kyle, we got a Hail Mary here. There's a guy in Idaho. He's built a grass tennis court in his backyard. Holy. I don't know how we're gonna contact him, but that's our only option at this point. Doing research, I stumbled across a YouTube video about a man who built a grass court in his backyard. Crazy enough, I was able to find him on Facebook and even crazier, he replied right away. One phone call later and we had plans to go to Idaho this weekend. Darby, you approve of this adventure? Absolutely not. Really? I'm so nervous for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we first connected with Corey around 11 a.m. and were able to book a flight that day at 4 p.m. We hopped on a plane to Boise with no real agenda but to see and play on Corey's grass tennis court. How's morale? No. Why? I feel like ass. <laughs> All right. We've landed in Idaho. Starting to get a little bit nervous. You know, we've only talked to this guy for 10 minutes. Seems like a great guy, but you know, it's always just a little weird. And that video of his court was from like six years ago. So it could be like dirt at this point. So we've traveled seven hours today to Idaho. This could be a bus. So a little nervous, but we can't think about that now because it's 10 o'clock and we gotta find a place to stay. All right, good news, we have found a place to stay, and it's the lovely budget inn of Boise, Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not the nicest establishment in the world. It's a, it's a 1.6 star hotel yeah. on Google reviews. We're gonna get straight to these reviews here and then give you all a little room tour. Cut straight to the chase, don't stay here. Dirtiest unvacuumed floors, no handle bathroom door, stand in unsanitary shower and tub. Absolutely the worst motel I've ever stayed at. The owner is the worst excuse for a human being. She called my sister a and was cussing us out the entire time. This woman has no business in the hotel industry. We gotta watch out for her. You gotta be a lookout at all times. <laughs> this next one doesn't make me feel confident about her stay here. Receptionist called me an ass for assuming we would reserve your room after reserving over the phone earlier. Demanded multiple forms of ID, but became very mad when I showed military ID. Loudly began shouting, what are you hiding? Been over 30 countries with the Air Force and stayed in countless hotels in the worst areas, but never received bad service enough to sit and write a terrible review. Signed up just to write this. Kyle, you confident? <laughs> uh, no. We're gonna have to keep our eyes peeled. We're gonna have to keep our backs. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're in good hands. Uh, my brother's right there. This thing is electric. 
We're gonna save y'all from the horrors of our room and cut straight to the next day where we finally headed to the court. I'm pretty nervous. You are? It's like just hitting me that we flew across the country to film a video. We've got five hours to execute. We've got five hours to execute and make this worth it. Let's try to put a good YouTube video together and let's have some fun playing some grass tennis. What do you say? We're out here, man. Here. You would, you would never guess that there's a tennis court. Yeah, can see it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have you checked on that? Hey! It's Craig! What's up? Welcome to Idaho, brother. Really? really. It's legit. Awesome. <laughs> We're here with Corey. He's got a tennis court in his backyard and it's grass, which is very hard to find in the U.S. Tell me how this happened. Like in 1998, we had some friends. Their parents lived in Baker, Oregon. And so they're like, hey, we can go out for the weekend, hang out and play on the grass. I was like, what? I've never played on grass. So we did it and it was just awesome. Yeah. Played barefoot. That was just an awesome weekend. And so I was like, when we get to a place where we buy a house, we're gonna buy one that has enough room and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put a court in. So how long did it take to, to put in the court? Well, I mean, there was a lot of planning, right? But total probably five days. What I did is I just scalped the grass and then I brought in like seven yards of sand to just top dress and try to get it smooth. Yeah rolled it, then seeded it with perennial rye. It's the same stuff that Wimbledon uses. And it took it took a couple months. So I started in April, but we were playing we were playing in July. Okay. Alright, so what do you do to maintain this thing? Like how many hours a week do you have to put in? Well I would say probably like four, but my wife would say it's more like ten, <laughs> okay. ten or twelve. So okay. I do spend more time maintaining than I do playing. Right. Um, but it's kind of a kind of cathartic, right? Yeah, you know how people nice. like to garden or whatever. Yeah. Peak season, I'm mowing twi usually twice a week. I'm usually painting, eh, usually every two to three weeks. Yeah. And, then, and then I roll, I put a big 400 pound water roller on the back of my riding lawnmower and, yeah. and drag it and roll it. And how long is like the season of play? We usually start playing late May. Yeah. And we'll go, I mean, we'll play into November. Tell me about just like the play. Oh, it's way different. So the ball doesn't bounce as high. And I call this my old school Wimbledon, like where it's serve and volley. Yeah. It, you know, now like Wimbledon, it, they just roll it and get it so hard. It plays more like a hard court, right? Okay. And you just gotta really watch the ball. I'll tell you, high school kids don't like it because they're so used to having the perfect bounce. Right. Right, and so they just get pissed. <laughs> and so it's kind of fun to play with them because they, it just frustrates them. So a, a good slice is, is a killer on this. Okay. So, so this is high, like the grass is higher than I expected it would be. Would you say this is like so Wimbledon? So Wimbledon, like no, this? Wimbledon would probably be down another. So I'm, I'm like at 7 16 Okay. I think, I think Wimbledon goes to like 3 16 If you build nice. it, they will come. That's what I. That is true, man. <laughs> From Texas, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are these? These are, these are fresh. Fresh. Grass bought, court shoes? No, they're not grass court shoes. Oh, okay. They discontinued the shoe. So I bought like five. Got a fresh pair for the grass. Nice. But they're, no, they're not grass. Oh my. So what's interesting is the harder you hit the ball, the better it bounces. Yeah, I guess mini tennis is not really, <laughs> not the move on grass. <laughs> All right, let's get back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Truly a different game. What does it feel like just walking on it feels awesome. Like, it just feels like you're walking on a cloud. Uh. Uh. See, that's what happens. That's, when that happens, you just, what do you yell, Jason? <laughs> Grass. Grass. <laughs> It's so different. I can't uh, see, read that. See, that would have got to you on a hard court. How long you been playing? Uh, since last December, so 10 months. Oh my gosh. You dug in. So one thing you'll notice about the court. Yeah. So it's right, completely in regulation. Right. But from the baseline back, we're about eight feet short on each. Okay. Just the, just the space behind. Thanks. But because it's grass, you don't need it. No, you definitely, I've noticed that. Oh, nice shot. Right That'll up. do. That's a grass volley right there. <laughs> that's, that's unique. <laughs> like these spots? 
worms have come up. We're like Buddhists, we just throw them off and... That was See that, that one right there? Yeah. That hit a wormhole or something probably. Something. You're playing 4-0? I'm playing 3-5. Okay. Sandbagger. <laughs> If you, if you read the YouTube comments, you'd think I was like a 2.5. <laughs> Corey and I then played a Sunday set and it was a blast. It was incredible how true the ball bounced once you started playing points. And we had some really, really no. good points. This wow. set will be posted in its entirety this Sunday in the Sunday Set Series. If you're new to the channel, every Sunday I take on a new challenger on my road to becoming better at tennis. So subscribe if you want to see those matches. It's different, it's different for sure. I feel like if I would have played on it a lot, you'd get used to it, but some of those bounces, like, he hits a drop shot and you have no chance to get it, so it's a different game. We then went to play doubles and I hadn't played in my entire life, so I needed a breakdown from Corey on the strategy. Turn to Jason, okay. and then you're gonna come in and force him to kind of, right, you wanna just narrow the court, so they have to hit progressively harder shots. Okay. We'll get it. All right, let's do it. It started off ugly, but then I started to get to the hang of it, and by the end of this thing, we were having the time of our lives. Oh, that's a shot. Oh, Oh, Cut that. Let's go. That was awesome. Great shot. Great shot. That's a good shot, Corey. Did you get that? Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They have A E L T C, all England lawn and tennis. Okay. We're all Eagle lawn and tennis club. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Next, it was time for the cameraman to get in on the fun. Locking in. Haven't touched a racket in about five months, but I'm really going to put on a show. Just so you know. <laughs> Whoop. I got it. Down. Rip it down the line. <laughs> ah, sorry. No, it's like I'm walking on pillows out here. I mean, you gotta get barefoot, it feels amazing. For playing tennis like 10 times in his life, Kyle was able to enjoy the court really well. He was actually ripping some backhands, and he's just a natural athlete. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see more of Kyle playing tennis and his journey to getting better at the sport. Dude, you're really good at that, like coming over it. It's the same thing as tennis, right? You're kind of loading this side and then Back. and then coming, coming through. Yeah, just like that, right? Yeah. Sort of lessons from Corey. Let's knock this thing out first try. Right? God, this feels so weird. It feels weird to hold it like this. Right? It feel weird? Yeah, it feels like I'm gonna just sweat and miss the ball. Oh, oh, like that? Okay, yeah. Nice. <laughs> I didn't have enough room. We stayed out there for hours, milking our time on the grass court as long as we could, and then Corey asked us the question. So was it worth it coming out? Was it worth it? This was a good question. We flew 1,600 miles, traveled seven hours, stayed in an awful hotel, all for a couple hours on a grass court. But the answer is absolutely yes. I got to spend a whole weekend with my brother, who lives in a different city than me, and play on one of the world's most unique courts. Not only that, but we also made a new friend in Corey who could not have been more hospitable. At the end of the day, that is what tennis is all about. It's not about the good shots or the bad, but the people you meet along the way and the memories that you make. Hopefully, this is the first of many. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, winners only, peace.